300 to Tow TV. Happy 300. Cha chong. We should have champagne flutes. Do we should. We don't own champagne flutes. <laughs> We're very bourgeois. <laughs> we have had such excitement. Yeah. There was a fly inside. And ever since Drew got stung by a bee one time, she does not like anything flying around her. Right. And for some reason, the flies go after her. So the poor girl was hiding under the bed. And then Spike was just freaking out. Totally. Drew was freaking out. And, and Helen and the fly locked themselves in the bathroom until, you know. One of them died. <laughs> so I would like to introduce you to my new partner, <laughs> podcasting partner. This is the fly. Helen is a great fly killer. The fly has been flushed down the toilet. Everything is well and good. But then we had to go outside to poop afterwards. <laughs> because we're so like and the stress. worker people. No, Spike and Drew had to go outside and poop. Not Helen and Mary <laughs> The workers next door were just really intrigued. By <laughs> okay, anyway. So for anybody That's new. Okay. They welcome were. to the <laughs> Where we talk about flies and poop all the time. <laughs> Actually, we don't. We really don't. <laughs> anyway, okay, so I am Mary Beth. I am Helen. And we are the creative hands and minds behind Toad Hollow and this circus. Um, and today is our 300th episode. Yes. So we have a Toad's Tale to do. And um, yeah, okay. So we have new yarn. I have the new Toad's Tale to tell you. And then we're going to... We're gonna have a giveaway. Gonna have a giveaway. Um, the Toad's Tale uh, is a mini skein set as they normally are. And then f um, those are ready to ship. We've dyed the mini skeins and they're ready to ship. The full skeins we have put up as pre-orders to just uh, gauge which ones are the most popular uh, and which ones we will dye full uh, skeins of. And they so. are available in 100% Toad, which is our fingering weight, 100% Super Wash, 400 yards. Um, our DK, our Toad DK, which is 100% superwash, 231 yards, and our sweater Toad, which is an Aran weight, guess what? 100% superwash, <laughs> merino, and 181 yards. Yep. Okay. And the mini skeins, you get five mini skeins because there are five colors, and they are in our sock Toad base, 80-20, um, 80% superwash, 20% right. nylon. And um, 82 yards. 82 yards each. Um, and for those that are new that haven't been around for a toast tail, because we haven't pulled out in a while. I think um, since March. Yeah. Yeah. Since, you know. Yeah, you know, the whole COVID started. Right. Anyway. Um, we, uh, sometimes we get inspiration for our yarn colors from illustrations, and we take those illustrations and we make up a little story from the hollow, which is, um, where everybody lives. Right. So, um... There are little tales, and so Mary Beth has a little story that she's going to read with uh, the inspiration pictures, and uh, as we get to the particular yarn, we will hold it up and show it. Okay. Right? right. That sounds good. Okay. Um, or, actually, you know what? What if I just read it through first, and then we'll show the and inspiration the pictures, pictures again, again. Okay. and do it. Okay. okay. So, this is the gnomes are coming, very apropos for November. Okay. So, in November, strong storms rolled through the hollow, leaving destruction in their wake. Younger trees, who had yet to take firm hold, were blown over. Several homes had damages, windows broken by falling branches, and roofs lifted, lifting off at the corners. None of the creatures that lived in the, uh, in the hollow were harmed, but the old yew tree, the oldest in the hollow, had roots that were over hundreds of years old and very brittle. And during one very bad storm, he toppled over, leaving a gaping hole at his base. The building crew, led by Grandpa Beaver, assessed the damage and decided that they were going to need help getting everything back to normal. Marvin Mole got in touch with a friend who had a friend who knew some great handymen. Page two. Well, do you want to show the picture? Or... Uh, no, I think yeah. we'll show that okay. at the end. Okay. The next day, Sam, you might remember Sam from the very first Christmas at the hollow. Right. Sam was climbing a tree and saw a line of caravans wending their way through the forest to the hollow. The people driving them were all singing and the lead one was being pulled by a lynx. Sam raced down the tree and ran as fast as he could, could back home yelling, the gnomes are coming, the gnomes are coming. Everyone in the hollow got very excited and it was like a carnival had come to town because the gnome crew didn't travel alone. They brought their families, including their children, so there were new people to with whom to play and exchange stories. 
Once the gnomes got settled, Digger and his crew got to work. The friendly lynx was his friendly lynx was very helpful, moving the heavier branches and digging out debris with his great big paws. Stanley, a quiet chap, used his cats to take ropes up the trees and drop them over strong branches so they could use them as pulleys to lift heavy wood. Charlie and Grandpa Beaver organized the rebuilding while Greg and his mice cleaned up the broken glass. Before you knew it, most of the homes were like new again. Henry, Max, and Sam tried to help where they could, but mostly they just got underfoot. Meanwhile, Chef Simon worked with all the cooks and had a huge feast waiting for the workers when they were finished. There were songs and stories and everyone got to stay up much later than usual. The next morning, when everyone gathered in the town square, the only thing left to fix was the old yew tree. I'm afraid he's lived his life and we're going to have to finish bringing him down, said Frank, who was an expert on trees. Well, we can take care of that, said the beavers, but what do we do about the hole? Sam, who was already trying to climb, climb down the hole, said, there's a tunnel down here. Long ago, long ago, said Gnarlbone, the oldest of the gnomes, and quite easily the oldest person the little ones of the hollow had ever met. There was a rumor that, of a tunnel that led from here to the most magical place on earth. Disneyland, asked Henry, and everybody laughed. No, said Gnarlbone, this was long before Disneyland got started. Well, then where did it go, asked Sam. I don't know, said Gnarlbone. No one remembers where it went, just that it was there. Well, then we need to follow it, said Sam immediately. We're not even sure it's the same tunnel, his mother pointed out. We won't know unless we follow it, said Sam, and no one could argue with that logic, so a few adventurous gnomes and creatures got ready to follow the tunnel. There was a bit of an argument when Sam's mother tried to tell him that he was too young to go on the expedition. He told her he would just slip out and follow them anyway, and wasn't it safer just to let him go with the group, especially since it was his idea to begin with? Knowing Sam, she agreed to let him go if he promised to stay with Digger and his links. So the explorers headed off down the tunnel, lanterns held high. The last thing everyone in the square heard was Sam asking Digger and his lynx a million questions about building things and digging things and just generally being a gnome. After a while, or after walking for quite a while, the darkness got a little bit lighter. One by one, the band put out their lanterns and realized they could see a light at the end. The tunnel opened into a very bright, very well-lit area that was also very cold. Well, well, boomed a voice. Who have we here? To be continued. You're going to have to find out where it goes next month. Next Toadsdale. Next Toadsdale. So, okay. For the Toadsdale, the five colors that we have are... This is the builders. The building crew. And we based it on the beaver. So there are grays and different shades of brown in there. And Helen was not sure about this to begin with, but I have brought her around. Yes. And I adore this color. This is a beautiful neutral color. So there's that. This, the second one, this is Digger and his links. And that is Digger. So there's the, the inspiration. The third one is for Stanley and his cats. And this is Stanley. And there he is with his cats. The fourth one is for Gnarlbone. This is Gnarlbone. Oh my god, I love that yarn. Yeah, this color is... I just love that yarn. And then, this is the light at the end of the tunnel. And we did the gray for the tunnel, and then there's pops of light at the end. And then... To see what's at the end of the tunnel, you have to wait until next right next, next month, month we will the, have, uh, and we will be debuting it at um, the Knit and Escape uh, virtual retreat. Right, will be uh, that. So, so then, all five together. So here are all five of them together. So we get the building crew, digger, 
Stanley. Stanley, not alone, and the light at the end of the tunnel. So these are all set to go. And then as Helen said, um, we're going to be taking pre-orders on the larger skeins. So if you want anything in the larger skeins, they're listed too. You can just let us know which base you want and how many. And they will be ready to ship probably by the beginning of December. Right. So, um, but the mini skeins will ship right away. Right. So, so there's our, there's November's totes tail. And I will put the, the, um, the tail with the, the pictures at the end so you can watch it again. If okay. So choose if not. Feel free to not. Okay. <laughs> also, we do have to make a quick adjustment to what we said yesterday. Um, we said that we were starting off Knit and Escape. We're not. Oh, Knit not and Escape is <laughs> actually December 3rd, 4th, and 5th. We are starting off day five, or, d or day three, the fifth. Yeah. Um, but there are going to be classes every day. And um, lectures um, um, and videos to see, and uh, there will be vendors all throughout three days. So we're going to be from 10 to 11 on Saturday. Right. And if you uh, go to the website and um, if you go to register, you don't have to register, but if you hit the go to register, then it'll take you to the schedules and you can look at all the schedules before you actually fill out all the registration information. It's $10 a person to do the, uh, just to go to like the, I think the lectures and the vet and do the vendor market. It may just be the vendor market. Um, but then the, the classes and everything are individually separate. Okay. So. All right. So, um, that's what we have right now. Um, we do have a giveaway. So we're going to pick a comment, one of the comments from today's episode, uh, and there will be a secret giveaway. Yes. You so won't know what it is until episode. we mail it to you because right. it's going to be a surprise. But it will be something from, from us. From us. Yeah. From our collections. Right. So um, what do we want them to say? I don't think they have to do no, they anything. Do. Just No, they do because I have to. Oh, uh, right. To first. sort it yeah. out. Okay. So. Um, all right. Happy 300. There you go. Happy 300. But make you, sure you say happy 300. Right. Because that way... That's the phrase I'm going to search for to do the random selector. So, um, but yes. So, if you would like to win something yarny and from the toads. Right. Just put 300. in happy 300. Yep. Okay. All right. I think that should do it. I think so. We are off to... Lots, lots of orders to ship out today. Yep. Lots yep. and lots of packing. So we are going to be working on that today. Um, we will be back tomorrow with State, State of the, of the sweaters. sweaters. Yep. Okay, State of the Sweater tomorrow and new fabric. Right. Last of the fabric collections. Right. Until the next delivery well, comes in. Well, I mean, but this will be catching up from the ones that have been sitting around right. for us to <laughs> get to get them. all caught up. Right. All right. So we hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Yes. Go forth and create, everybody. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.